another day, another dark parking lot. We didn't quite know what we were going to do yesterday, but we figured it out due to Aaron's tireless research on cool things to do in the area, and there are so many that it's hard to pick. We settled on the Wapta Traverse, and this is a 30-mile-ish traverse through the Canadian Rockies with about 8,000 feet of climbing. And the reason we were unsure is because roads were closed, we're going to have to hitchhike, we had to get a reservation at the Duncan Hut, and so far, half of those things have worked out. We're yet to get a ride back to this spot uh, when we finish, obviously, and that's a big part of it. But we've got enough things going for us that we're gonna leave this van here in a minute and start heading out. Our goal today is to make it to the Duncan Hut where we have reserved a spot. We don't have any of the necessary hut items like slippers or any luxury items. We're just gonna lay down on whatever's there, heat up the hut, and do our best to try and get some sleep. So we're about to embark on the WAPTA in typical mediocre amateur fashion. I had never even heard of this route two days ago and I still have no idea what it means. But um, it looks pretty awesome and I think it's gonna be in some of the coolest terrain we've ever been in. 20 miles a day, about 8,000-ish feet of climbing, and we should have a nice, toasty, warm hut. Came out to this very nice deck, maybe quarter mile in, and we are given a beautiful look at our route, which is up that canyon at the end of the lake. So we'll be going up this, and then 20 more miles after that. Man, the views here are hard to beat, and they're so iconic too. You look down, and you're like, "This is uh, Canada. It's Canadian Rockies right here." We're about to do our first ascent down to Peito Lake, and we have to go right down this treacherous looking trail into the trees. By far the most dangerous thing we'll do all trip. It's getting dangerous. That's exactly why I bought a helmet. Just did the derby down to the lake. It was a thousand feet that we're going to have to gain right ahead. I only hit one tree unintentionally. The rest were a part of a bushwhack. And I think that if there's anything that we can agree that uh, us Americans and Canadians have in common is it's a love for a good bushwhack. Your boots are waterproof, Danny. Already we've been required to do two spicy things. River cross, tree derby. Luckily, none of us got soaked, because that would have been the end of the day. just found this ice cave completely unexpected. I am honestly in awe. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Um, I'm blown away. This is amazing. In awe right now. I've never seen anything like this. Woo! We just went through this ice cave and ice caves always make me tighten up all over the place. 
a little nervous, but at least it's freezing cold and we're in Canada and the sun's not on it. And there's none of the constant crashing sound you hear when you're around a glacier or an ice cave. So I felt as good as you can about going through this ice cave. You can see there's an entrance over here. You can go all the way through this tunnel and exit right here. These types of things always get you pumped. I'm hoping that it'll motivate us to get through this climb with some nice energy up onto the Wapta ice field. This cave itself is at the bottom of the ice field and it was awesome stumbling upon it. And it was even better watching Aaron's reaction because you know, he doesn't get out much and this is his first ice cave. And I was just glad I was here to witness the enthusiasm he had for big blue dangerous caves. Hard to put this ice field into perspective. It looked tiny, but it's taking a long time to get from point to point. It's beautiful. It feels remote, rugged. It really gives you that cool adventure vibe. And it's nice to know that there's a hut waiting for you up ahead. Also nice to know that should something happen, there's actually one or two huts up ahead. So you go crash someone else's party if you break a ski or something. That's possible we have to go over that pole right there. It's not over there. Things got a little windy there and cold as we passed just above the bow hut. But we're back out onto the sunny, relatively flat, warm, pleasant glacier. We passed the 10 mile mark about a half mile ago. So it's nice to know that we're closing the space between us and our hut. So we have moseyed on by a couple of huts. I think it's called the Peito hut in the bow hut and we're just uh, cruising across the Wapta glacier or ice field. I couldn't tell you the difference between the two honestly. All I know is it's huge. It looks like a freaking ocean of ice in the, and snow in the mountains and it just goes on forever. You could seriously explore for months in this area and everywhere you look is what you'd expect. Amazing. Uh, so we are about to go over another pass and down into another ice field or glacier work our way towards our abode for the evening. We're leaving the Wapta ice field and now getting on the Vulture Glacier. We'll see if we actually get any real skiing. Thus far, I wouldn't say we've had any real skiing yet. But it's a traverse. It's not a ski tour. It's a traverse. We're traversing, not getting powder turns.
looks to be maybe one of the cruxier sections of this route. And it's super wind loaded. We've been getting blasted with a sand blast the whole way up this glacier. So we know that this is gonna be wind loaded. Question is, is do we go and try to skirt this huge ice field and go up the more mellow way or go up maybe this left way and uh, kind of see if that looks like it's wind loaded. I think, we're, I think we decide we're gonna go on, on the left. If it looks wind loaded, then we take our chances getting buried by ice. Hey, don't want to get hit by one of these guys. Don't go in the holes. Don't get hit by house sized blocks of ice. You can see the mountain we climbed yesterday over there. And what's funny is while we were over there, Aaron pointed over here and said, you know, we could go do the WAPTA coming up to what I hope is the end of our climb. Then we'll get some descent down to the Duncan hut. And we'll also get to be in the sun, which would be nice. Hopefully out of the wind too. That would be a bonus. I wouldn't say the views got worse over here. Um, we just finally got into the sun, which feels amazing. The wind's still here. Um, somehow it changed direction again. Something about being in high mountains and in the shade. And when the wind picks up, everything feels more remote, a little bit more dangerous, and like it's never going to end. So it's always a nice little like gift now to get out here in the sun. This is unreal. Don't be any better than this. Got the hut in view, we think. That or it's just a very well-shaped boulder with what looks like windows. But I think it's the hut. It's right ahead of us, the base of this mountain. And we've had this wonderful open ski shot down this glacier that was just brought pure pleasure. I can't wait to get warm. I'm looking forward to getting out of the wind in that hut. So the boulder behind us is looking more and more hut-like. Looks like it's right at the base of Mount Daly, which is right behind me. And uh, so it's, we just got to skid over there. Looks like maybe a one or 200 foot climb to the hut. This requires a whip it to get it open. Can't do much with skis on. There you go. Clean. Nice. It's warm in here. We made it to the Duncan hut and it's offering what it's promised and that is shelter and stoves that may or may not have propane. That was a 20 mile day, exactly, with 7,200 feet of climbing. I'd say out of that 20 miles, probably 17 were on glaciers and that always makes you feel cool. 
and adventurous. But now we're going to get settled here and cook some food. I think we're both pretty hungry. All I've had today is Slim Jim, cheese, and a Pop-Tart for 20 miles. It's not very much. Time to cook more. Oh! Cannot wait to take these boots off. Oh, how's that feel? Oh, it feels amazing. Aaron and I really didn't plan to do the Wapta Traverse until the very last minute. So we had none of the things necessary to be comfortable at a hut as rugged as this. Our plan all along was to take every shell we have and cover ourselves with those shells and try to make the hut as warm as possible. So we've done the first part by running the stoves for a while. And now we're going to do the next part, which is try and get some shut eye covered in uh, a couple jackets and maybe a space blanket. We considered doing the whole traverse in one go, but we're worried about getting a ride if we showed up late to the road. Hitchhiking at night might be a little bit more difficult than hitchhiking in the morning. But we had our top ramen. I had some the mashed potatoes, Mountain Dew, and now we're just going to cover ourselves with the Mountaineer's equivalent of cardboard and try to get some shut-eye. We've consumed our breakfast, which in this case was oatmeal for both. We've cleaned up the hut a little bit. It can never truly be clean. And now we're going to complete the Wapta Traverse by going down the last 10 miles. And I said going down because supposedly most of it is down. So we'll be descending here in what turns has turned out to be white out conditions. Uh, some clouds moved in last night after just hurricane winds. The winds last night were so strong that both Danny and I woke up wondering if the hut could withstand that strength of wind. This hut is 30 years old, 35 years old, yet both of us wondered in our stupor, in our sleepless stupor. Um, so now we're about ready to finish the Wapta Traverse. We have about 10 miles of flat or downhill. Our adventure isn't over once we get down to the end of this trail. Then the real adventure begins. We have to hitch and get a ride all the way back to our van, which is probably like 30, 40 miles away. So maybe 50. So that's gonna be a, a gargantuan task. And it's the one that kept me up last night. That and the lack of a sleeping bag being warm. Get this party started. Oh, the masters. Yep, we shall. Hearing anything on your eyes right now, Daddy? Nope. Walking through the snowstorm in the dark is really intimidating on the one hand, but also pretty incredible. Like when I stop and think about where I am right now in the freaking Canadian Rockies in the middle of nowhere. It is quite the surreal and awesome experience. We've taken off the rope, put it away, and from here on out it should be downhill skiing. But there's never any guarantee that that's the case. You can always find a little uphill right there at the end. Maybe a little bushwhack too. But hopefully it's smooth sailing all the way to the car. So we're packing up the rope. We're uh, tearing off our skins and beginning our way down.
Oh, that's the easy part. Now for the hard part, <laughs> find a ride. All right, that's the Wapta. 30 miles and 8,000 feet of climbing. I was worried about getting a ride and it ended up that getting a ride was the least of my worries. I should have been more concerned about the possibility of zero visibility while on a glacier, which is what we got this morning. But we safely navigated it with Aaron's bird-like instincts. Got off the glacier, did a really gnarly push to uh, the parking lot and then got a ride right away. And then on our second road, someone gave us a ride after six cars. So not bad at all. And now we have a marathon drive home so we can make our wives happy and make it possible to do this again later. I mean, we left Salt Lake three days ago with no plan. The only route that we had in mind happened, it turns out it was in Whistler, <laughs> not here. And so to come here and have everything work out, have some of a sweet peak two days ago with Hector and then do the entire WAPTA with almost no planning. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's just amazing. And um, my wife always gets mad at me for always think, saying that things will work out, but you know, they kind of just do sometimes.